Hey everyone, and welcome to Wicode, where in this video we're going to learn how to add protected routes to an Express app using JWT authentication. So before we start, let's just give a brief overview of what a JSON web token or JWT is. So this right here is a JWT, and a JWT is simply a way to securely transmit information between entities, such as a client and a server, or a browser and a server. This information is transmitted as a JSON object, hence the name JSON web token. So this right here can be decoded into a JSON object that contains information about where it came from. And as such, JWTs are commonly used to implement authorization if they have a small overhead and ensure integrity through signing of the token. And we'll go over more of that, um, this structure and everything in a bit, but first let's focus more on our Express setup. So for this project, we have our Express app right here, and we have a route right here that simulates a login route and a protected route, this one right here, that requires a valid JWT to be accessed. It requires a valid JWT because we are gonna be placing some authentication or an authentication middleware right here. In other words, this will be a middleware that verifies the JWT and it will be ran before this protected route. If an invalid token is received, then the error is caught by the custom error handler, which we have right here, and we'll return a 403 with an invalid token message. And of course, we'll implement this stuff. But first, let's go over creating a JWT. And the way to do that is we're gonna use the library JSON Web Token. This is simply an NPM library that implements the JWT specification. Now, we're gonna place all our JSON Web Token logic inside a service called JWT Service. I'm just gonna paste in some code right here. So first at the top, we import our JWT or JSON Web Token library. Then we use its sign function right here to generate a JWT. Specifically, this JWT sign method takes three things. First, it takes a payload, which is the object that we want the JWT to contain. So when this string here is decoded, we can get that payload. Next is a secret, this argument right here, which is used to sign the token. And this should be an environment variable and hidden from the public and also hard to guess. For this demonstration, we just have it as a static variable right here. And then finally, we have some options which are of course used to configure the JWT. And this expires in option mentions when the token expires or is no longer valid. And so before we go more into making this work with Express, let's go over this JWT structure. So this JWT sign method, let me actually bring this over here. So this JWT sign method will return a string that looks like this. And it consists of three different parts, a header, a payload, and a signature. So the header contains the token type and the signing algorithm used. So this part right here will be decoded from the string into an object that contains information such as the token type and the algorithm used. Then we have the payload right here, which contains the claims or statements about an entity. So for example, our user information right here. And then we have a signature right here, which consists of an encoded header, payload, and a secret all hashed with the algorithm specified in the header. These three parts are then encoded. So our header, payload, and signature, they're all encoded and joined together by a dot, which forms this. So we have our header, a dot, payload, a dot, and our signature. So now that we've talked more about the structure, let's add a method to this class that we can use to verify a JWT or decode one. And we'll call it decode JWT. This essentially checks that the provided token hasn't been tampered with. So the verify function right here of JWT returns the decoded JWT payload if the token is valid. And the token is valid if it hasn't expired, the signature is valid, things like that. If the token has been tampered with, the token won't be valid as the signature check with this verify will fail. So now let's fill in our login route. So back in our server, let's fill in this to create a JWT when it receives a request. Of course, this is just a simple example. So in a real world scenario, the user first needs to log into the system successfully before accessing this route and obtaining a JWT. Now we need to send a curl request to this route and look at what's returned. So I'm gonna run this project with npm start. We have an issue right here. It's just got a bad location. So our server is listening on port 4001. Now I'm gonna open up another window over here and let's send a request to our login route. So what happens? is we are sending, let me zoom in a bit, we are sending a curl where the header is application.json and we're sending post data containing a username and an ID. So in our login route, 
we obtain this info, and then we generate a JWT using this information. And the JWT that it returns is this right here. So we can see the header right here, a dot, we can see our payload, and then at the end, another dot and our signature. And so this was created using this JWT sign method with our user information that we specified here. So if we decode this JWT, it will give us the user information. So to decode it, let's go into our, or let's create some authentication middleware. So we'll replace this right here. And so for this middleware, let me pull this down a bit. We use app.use as it is called every time a request is sent to the server, unless it's intercepted first, of course. But first we're gonna obtain a JWT from the authorization header. Specifically, we obtain the JWT from the authorization header with the bearer schema and then decode it to get the user information. So right here, we get the JWT, then we decode it, and then we attach the user information to the locals property of the response object. This locals property contains variables scoped to that specific request. So now that we've done that, let's go to fill in our protected route where we're just gonna send back this user information. So now if our token is verified, it will be able to access this route, get the user from the locals property, and then send them back. So let's show this in action actually by let's send a curl request containing this token. So we're gonna send a curl request. We're gonna specify a header that will be authorization with the bare schema, paste in our token, and we wanna send that to localhost 4001-protected. And what we get back is the information that we encoded. So our username, an ID, when it was issued, and also when it expires. Of course, this issued at and expires were appended by the JWT library, but so, now let's try and tamper with this token and let's see what happens if we try and contact our protected route. So let's just change up the header a bit or just change up the token and let's send it. And what we get back is an invalid token. So you can see what will happen is we're gonna use this decode right here to verify the token with our secret. And because of the secret, we can tell if it's been tampered with or not. If it has, we get back invalid token, which is caught by our verification middleware. And then once again, if we send our correct token, we get back our user information. So let's create another user. This time let's set the username to wit scepter, which is the name of my Chrome extension, link in the description if you're curious, and give them a new ID. This will be the token for them. So let's paste this right here. And now if we paste this token here and send the request, we get back this user. So this token is decoded into that user. But so this is just what I wanted to show you on authentication with JWTs using Express. If you have any questions, leave them for me in the comments. I'll try and get back to you. Besides that, thank you for liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.